boys and girls, how are you this morning? Oh, I'm so glad. How are you in your classrooms? I am so glad that you're all able to join us today. Would you stand up and worship the Lord with me? Uh, we are going to start with the books of the Bible, and our verse today is going to come from 1 John. So I want you to really listen, and when we say 1 John, I want you to do a little dance. All right, here we go. The books of the Bible, time-tested and reliable. Scripture has a power that's undeniable. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, and Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, and Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. The books of the Bible, their wisdom's verifiable. Scripture has a power that's undeniable. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, and Romans, first Corinthians, second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians, one and two, first Timothy, second Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, first and second Peter, First and second John, Third John, Jude and Revelation, the books of the Bible, time tested and reliable. Now you know all 66 books of the Bible. All right, we are going to move on to one of my very favorite songs God is for us.
girls. What a way to start our morning. That was wonderful. We were a little tricky before we left for spring break. I introduced a new song. Do you remember? I am loved. Well, the new song is going to be our April song of the month, but we wanted you to hear it because we missed a week for spring break. Just as I am, you welcome me with open arms. How can this be? My guilt is undone, my past is untethered. I leave it behind, my father. There is no Would you take a seat, please? All right, this year, what has our chapel theme been, guys? What is it, Lily? 
a child of God. And what it means to be, what, when we say, I'm a child of God, what does that mean? Now, can you guys take any guesses as to what our new theme is for April? I'll give you a big hint. You just sang a lot about it in the song. What do you think it is, Ivy? A child of God is what? Is loved. Yes, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. But first, let's practice our theme verse. It's been a while. Okay, let's see what we can do. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1, 12. And then with our different themes, we've talked about how a child of God is brave. A child of God is generous. A child of God is obedient, chosen, faithful, and seen. Now, as we think about a child of God and how they're loved, I want you to think about the following questions. Who do you think God loves more? And I'm going to give you a couple scenarios with boys, a couple scenarios with girls, and I'm going to want you to hold up your fingers between 1 and 10. If, you know, God loves them just a little bit because he's God, like, give them one. If God loves them a whole lot, it's going to be 10. If it's somewhere in between, you can do in between. But listen to these questions. Do you, how much do you think God loves the boy that throws the fit when he doesn't get his way? What do you think, between 1 and 10? Okay. What about how much does God love the boy who always uses good manners? Okay. What about how much, and I hope you're doing this in your classrooms too, how much does God love the girl that steals things from other people? Between 1 and 10, how much do you think? Okay, and then how much do you think God loves the girl who is so generous and always shares her things? Well, you know, we learned about how a child of God is generous, so yeah, I certainly think God would love that. Uh, does God love the boy that works really hard at school? What about the boy who is lazy and always whines about having to do work? Okay, what about how much you think God loves the girl who loves going to church and loves being part of the children's stuff and singing and worshiping? What about the girl who thinks that church is dumb and doesn't like to go? One to ten. Okay, you know what? Some of you guys got this, and I was very careful to not give any hints or any clues throughout this. Some of you guys got Got it, and I love it. Some of you held up 10 fingers for every single question that I have. And I love that, because you know what? That's what we want to get to. Now, if we are picking a friend, and you are picking between a friend that throws fits all the time or who has good manners, who are you going to pick to be a friend that you want to spend a lot of time with? The one that has manners, because do you want to spend your time playing, dealing with somebody having a fit? Like, that's not so fun. If you're picking between somebody who is going to take your stuff or who's going to share, who are you going to pick? So when it comes to us, when we're picking friends and picking people that we want to spend time with, yeah, we're going to pick the one that's making good choices because it's, it's easy to be around. And you know what? The Bible tells us, even as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. And God wants us to... Um, help make our friends better people and help us choose really good friends that make us better too. So it is important that we are wise when we make the choice, but we, it, we need to remember that God does love us all the same. When Jesus died on the cross, it wasn't just for the good kids who use their manners, who shares, who works really hard and doesn't whine and who loves church. God died on the cross and loves the boy that throws the fit or the girl that steals things or the boy that's lazy and whines or the girl that thinks church is dumb. God loves them all the same. And Jesus died on the cross for all of them. So this month, as we talk about how a child of God is loved, we really want to think about that because let's, and, and what that means. Because let's think about this, and I'm not going to ask you to answer this question out loud, but think about it in your head. Have you ever done something wrong? And if you answered, everybody should say yes, because you know what? You all have. I'm not asking you to confess what you've done here, but you know what? I've messed up, okay? Because you know what? 
sin, sadly, sin is part of our world. And the Bible says, you know, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So sinning is making a wrong choice. So we've done something wrong. Okay? So now, how do you feel, though, when you've done something wrong and sort of the person in charge, whether it's your parent or your teacher or a camp counselor or a coach, You've done something wrong, and the person in charge found out about it. How do you feel? Let's list some words of how you might feel. Quinn? Guilty. Absolutely. Um, Noah? Disappointed. Hopefully we do. We should feel disappointed. Okay, and not just disappointed because we got caught, but disappointed because we made a wrong choice, Gus. Sometimes we might feel a little bit selfish. What else do you think? Sad. Hopefully we do feel sad. Peyton? Sometimes it might be mad. And sometimes we might be mad that we got caught. Or we might, hopefully it's more, we're mad because, man, that was a wrong choice and I knew better. Okay, you might feel embarrassed. Okay, you might feel ashamed. Okay, so we have lots of yucky feelings when that happens. What do we expect is going to happen when we make a wrong choice and it, we get caught. Somebody finds out. What do we expect to happen? Elena? We get punished, okay? Because you know what? When you make a choice, you're also choosing the consequence that comes with that. Okay, so if you choose to not study your Bible verse for the Bible verse test, should you expect to do well on it? No, if you're choosing not to study or prepare for something, then you are choosing to like, okay, my grade might suffer or I might ha- miss out of summer recess or I might not be able to watch TV tonight. So when we make a poor choice, we're exp- you know, we, we need to be prepared for the consequence that comes with it. Now, how do we, we want to be treated, though, when we've done something wrong? What do you think about that? When you do something wrong, do you want somebody who was like, you're terrible. I can't believe you made that terrible choice. You messed up again. You're an awful person. Is that how your teacher should treat you if you make a mistake in class? Absolutely not. Now, should they address a problem if there's a problem? Absolutely. Okay, so I think it's fair for us to say, you know what, when we mess up, we have to deal with the consequence that comes with that okay there was one time and it's been years ago now but there was one time I was driving trying to get somewhere and I was driving too fast and what do you think happened I got a speeding ticket and I was honest I did not try to cover it up I did not try to make a bunch of excuses I did tell the the police officer where I was going and and you know all of that and I got a ticket and I had to pay for the ticket, okay? I made a poor choice, and I had to deal with the consequence, but I didn't try to cover it up. I didn't try to lie about it. I didn't try to be sneaky about it. I was honest about it, and you know what? He treated me respectfully, like still gave me the consequence, but did it respectfully, and when we get in trouble, that is something that we hope will happen because we want to be, you know, the punishment should be fair for what happened. Was it fair that I got the ticket that day? Yes. Was I sad that I got the ticket that day? Absolutely. But you know what? It was fair. There, I could not argue about it at all because I made the choice to drive too fast. All right? So the reality is we're all going to mess up sometimes, and we're going to make mistakes, and we're going to make wrong choices. We shouldn't be like, oh, well, no big deal. No, we should constantly try to be better, but we also need to realize that we're not going to be perfect. And while Jesus was living on the earth, guys, I need you to turn around, please. Throughout his time on earth, Jesus liked to teach people that God really does love everyone. And many times it was some of the church people who would get upset because they thought they they were better than the sinners. And you know what? Are we better than anybody else? No. You know what? We're sinners. We Now certainly, like, you might be better at something than someone else, but that doesn't make you a better person, okay? We are all sinners, who need Je- who need Jesus. And so um, today I'm going to read to you a parable from our favorite book, favorite children's Bible story book. Uh, I'm going to read you a parable. Now, a parable is a teaching story. It always includes a lesson. Guys, I need you to sit up, please. Thank you. Um, 
the parables are teaching stories, and Jesus would use these to help us learn lessons, um, help his disciples then and even us now. And so in this one, it's helping us to understand God's love for everyone. So as we listen to this parable, think about the Father shows us what God is like, and the brothers in the story show us what we are like. When we're done, I'm going to want you to tell me, what does this story teach us? Because it's a parable. It's a teaching story. So what does this teach us about God? And what does it teach us about us as humans? Jesus told this story about a boy who ran away. Once upon a time, there was a boy and his dad. Now, one day the boy gets to thinking, Maybe if I didn't have my dad around telling me what is good for me, I'd be happier. He is spoiling my fun. Does my dad really want me to be happy? Does he really love me? And the son had never thought of that before, but suddenly he doesn't know anymore. So the son goes to the father and says, Dad, I'm better off without you. I can look after myself. Can you give me my inheritance, my share of, the, of your money? Well, his father is sad, but he would not force his boy to stay, so he gives his son what he wants. The son takes the money and goes on a long, long journey to a far-off country, and everything is wonderful and perfect for a while. He can go wherever he wants. He can do whatever he wants. He can be whoever he wants. He is the boss, and he is free. Does that sound good to you guys? I mean, it sounds sort of fun. Sometimes he gets a strange, hungry, homesick feeling inside his heart, but he just goes and eats more or drinks more or buys more things or goes to parties until it goes away. But soon, his money runs out. And so do his friends. He ends up getting the only job he can find, feeding pigs. And one day, he is so hungry and so desperate, he even tries to eat the pig food. What am I doing? He says suddenly, as if he had woken up from a nightmare. He spits, ugh, all of it, ugh, out of his mouth. My father is rich, and here I am in a pigsty eating piggy food? He wipes his mouth and dusts himself off. I'm going home. As he starts for home, though, he begins to worry. Dad's not going to love me anymore. I've been too bad. He won't want me for his son anymore. So he practices his, his I'm sorry speech. And all this time, what he doesn't know is that day after day, his dad has been standing on his porch straining his eyes, looking into the distance, waiting for his son to come home. He just can't stop loving him. He longs for the sound of the boy's voice. He can't be happy until he gets him back. The son is still a long way off, but his dad sees him coming. What will his dad do? Fold his arms and frown or shout, That'll teach you, and just you wait, young man. But no, that's not how this story goes. The dad leaps off the porch. He races down the hill, through the gap in the hedge, and up the road. Before his son can even finish his I'm sorry speech, his dad runs to him, throws his arms around him, and he can't stop kissing him. Let's have a party, his dad shouts. My boy is home. He ran away. I lost him. But now I have him back. Jesus told them, God is like the dad who couldn't stop loving his boy. And people are like the son who said, does my dad really want me to be happy? Jesus told this story to show them what God is like and to show people what they are like so they could know however far they ran, however well they hid, however lost they were, it wouldn't matter because God's children could never run too far or be too lost for God to find them. All right, now before we answer some of the questions, I do want to give you a few more teaching things about this story. Because when I talked about what did the, the boy, what job did he end up getting, the son? Feeding pigs. And I heard some ew with that. Okay, and you know what? Like, yeah, that would be a gross, messy job. But it's more than just sort of, gross. Let me explain a little bit. Under the Moses law, Jews, and this was a Jewish family, 
were forbidden to eat pigs or even touch a dead one. So this sort of led people to get to the point that they hated pigs, and they sort of made up this rule that um, people who worked with pigs at all were unclean. They had rules about who was clean and who was unclean, and these were like unclean people. But yet there were herds of people that were found, uh, herds of pigs found in, in Palestine, and they were raised in the Gentile communities. So to be compared to a pig or someone who worked with a pig was like the worst offense because it was being like, oh, because the Jews, remember, they were God's chosen people, and sometimes they didn't always use that in the most respectful way towards others. Um, and so when the people who were listening to Jesus tell this story, like not only were they thinking, ooh, that's gross, but they also recognized like, whoa, this is like the lowest of the low. So they recognized how like how this son was in really bad shape now also one thing there's an older brother in the story as well if you read this in the book of Luke if you read the full thing this one just focuses on the younger son and his father but there's an important piece here too because the way things worked in Bible times like now but when people are um a lot of grown-ups will have what's called a will. And a will is where you say, okay, when I die, this person is going to get this. This person is going to get that. This per I'm going to give this much money to this person or this organization. And so that way when you die, like, people know, like, what's going to happen with your things. And it was a little bit different during Bible times. There was a law from Moses that told them how the inheritance would be divided. The oldest boy would receive a double portion Okay, and then the other sons would get equal amounts. So let's say there were three kids. They would divide it four ways. The older brother would get half of it, and each of the younger brothers would get a fourth of it. Okay, so a little fraction lesson there. Um, so they didn't have to have wills because it was always that way, and the land belonged to the family, um, not just to a person. And so based on this, with this rule, these people listening to the story would also know, like, hey, that son, he took his part of the inheritance, and he wasted it, which means how much does he get now? Zero. He gets nothing. He's used up what he had. So that's really tough. All right? Now, so let's think about, because there's a less, there are lessons here. In this story, it talks about some, but I want to hear from you all. What did we learn about God the Father from this story? What did we learn, Lily? You'll not get lost. You'll always get found. God is always going to be there, okay? He will always, he can always, and will always, he wants to find you. Um, what else, Libby? He will always love you. Did this son make some really selfish, terrible choices? Yeah. But what did the father in the story do every day? Loved him, but what did it specifically say he did? He waited, and when he was waiting, what else was he doing? Waiting on the porch because he was, well, sad. He was what? He was looking for him, okay? He was hoping his son would come back, okay? He loves him that much, not like, I hope he comes back because I got a lesson to teach him, but like, oh, that's my son, and I love him, and I miss him, okay? So, it, we see that where the father was patient, he was accepting, he was forgiving. He did not even let his son finish his I'm sorry speech before he embraced him and wrapped him. And guys, that is a picture of how God feels about us. No matter what, he is always going to meet us with open arms because he loves us. Now, does that mean that, that, that God says, oh, no problem about your sin. There's no consequences there. Sometimes there's still consequence for our sins, but we are always loved. Now, what do we learn about the sun, about us through the sun in this story? Sometimes we can be selfish. And when we do something wrong, do we have to say, oh, well, I made my choice. I can't go back now. No. You know what? We can't. We don't have to be afraid that God is going to stop loving us because we can go to God and admit, God, I messed up. And just like the Father embraced him, the Father will embrace us too. So, guys, God wants to save all of us. God loves all of us. It's not just the people who work really hard and try to follow all the rules. The people who make poor choices, God loves them too. 
And guys, how cool is that? And that should make a difference in our lives. We should live differently because we are loved in such a big and amazing way. Our verse this month comes from 1 John, the beginning of verse 1 in chapter 3. And it says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God. Now, lavished, that's a big word. When I think of lavish, I think it's like pouring down rain. It's not just like a little drip from the sink of like, here's a little bit of love. But it is like taking a hose and like drenching you. Okay, so he lavishes the love on you. And how cool is that? That what great love he's lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. And so, guys, we need to understand, and we need to be ready and willing. This son was going back to God, and he had his I'm sorry speech ready. And if you look in Luke, you can actually see the things that he was going to say. God, I have, or Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your servants. But his God didn't even finish that. And, you know, his dad didn't even let him finish that. So in order for us to truly become his children, we need to be willing to go back and acknowledge, God, this is where I messed up. And God is going to lavish his love on you. He is faithful and just to forgive us. But we need to be willing to go back to him. And he is there waiting and watching and excited to meet us because that is how much he loves you. All right, let's pray together. Father, I thank you so much for your great love for us. Lord, I thank you that you love us all. And God, help us to remember that you love all people. You love the people that it's easy for us to be around, that make good choices. And God, you love the people that are struggling and and that make poor choices. And so, God, I just pray that you will help us to always look at the choices we're making, to make the best choice. But, Lord, when we make a wrong choice, help us remember that you love us so much and you are willing to forgive us. We just need to come back to you. And, Lord, help us to be ready and willing to acknowledge those things that we, um, those mistakes that we've made, even if we feel embarrassed or sad. But know that you're always going to treat us fairly and you're always going to treat us with love. God, we just love you so much, and thank you for how you love us so perfectly. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for paying attention. Um, Let's go ahead and clear out. If we want to do maybe just, um, since we're a little bit different setup, like back to front. So maybe third grade can go out that door, second grade that door, and then first grade sort of at the end today. But thank you guys for being here, and I hope you guys know that you are very, very loved.